Greetings, fellow traveling. Today, I'd like to discuss the topic of deception. A lot of our journey, we can have times where we deceive others and we're deceived by others. It's guaranteed. I think one of the best lessons we can gather from these experiences is how we deceive ourselves and others and how we allow ourselves to be deceived by others. I know for myself along my journey, I, uh, man, for a better part of my younger years, it was playing the victim. It was so easily learned from the environment around me. But as far as I can remember, that was a play that I've done since I was a kid. So I'm not blaming the environment but I gained momentum in approaching life a certain way. And I found tools within my environment to help maneuver in that manner. And as I got older and certain awarenesses uh, popped up in my psyche, I guess, as I woke up, I began to see the impact of maneuvering that way in my life. More importantly, I was feeling the impact because I was being deceived so much more in my outside world. Because the world reflects back to you who you are. So when I became accountable for approaching my journey that way and made changes, many, many situations in my life changed, including the people I resonated with. It wasn't that many now including uh, my popularity among social social circles that I have become uh, accustomed to being in. Yeah, I wasn't welcome. And when I first started taking these steps of being accountable for not being the victim, for not intentionally deceiving anyone, it wasn't as difficult as I thought. Yes, there were some hurt feelings. There were some tears shared to hold on. But once I had that realization in myself, that was the hardest, most difficult person to reach was myself. So once my inner self was open to that message, open to that idea of, hey, this may be something you can change. This is something you can change. This may be something that's contributing to the many issues you find yourself surrounded in. Once I was able to be accountable, step back and observe my life and see, oh yeah, you can change this. Everything else was easier. It was simpler. Not always easier, but it was by far simpler. Because I could be honest with myself. Cool. That's the person I have to live with. Myself. So when interacting with others, when I began to speak my truths, stand on my voice, allow the uncomfortable aspects of certain relationships to come to the light, I wasn't proud of the outcome some of the times. No, because the outcome was determining on somebody else and how they received what I shared or told them. But I was proud of me Undoubtedly, because I knew what was right for me and I stayed with what I intuitively knew what was right for me. Now, going back to the topic of the aspect of deception, I, I formed a different relationship with deception because I would view any form of deception as an attack on myself. You're rightfully so, because that's what it feels like. It's an attack on who you truly are. Just as when I used to do it, it was an attack on somebody else and how they truly are or what they truly feel. More importantly, I began to disassociate that personal aspect and just observe what was going on. I would observe the, the deception that some would attempt to place on me or place in my world, in my reality, to get me to conform or to change. 
And I begin to notice not only patterns in the way others will attempt to deceive you or shame you for not accepting their deceit, but I begin to realize that for some, many in my case, many of the people that I have witnessed this deception in, that's the only way they've accepted. That's the only tool, I should say, they've accepted in their life to get their way. They will manipulate facts. They will create narratives. They would do many things in the dark, operating from the idea that if they, if no one witnessed it, then it didn't happen to them. I've even had people when I was growing up tell me things like this. Elders. Uh, it's interesting. Because when you step back and you depersonalize what's happening, you simply see it for what it is. You see an object fall off the table. That has nothing to do with me. Even if I push the object off the table from the observer aspect, I witnessed the object that was forcibly moved from one location to another, which happened to be from the table to the floor. It's not, it's not a personal observation. It's simply an observation from this perspective. Now, doing that with a uh, deceit in others, taking the, obser the observer, excuse me, approach when witnessing the deceit that others will bring you. It keeps the emotions at bay at times and allows you to truly feel what is happening to truly witness what is happening and to understand that whether that person knows it or not they're attempting to manipulate you interesting I'm sharing this because I had an incident last week where I forgot to be the observer and in a moment where a uh, person in my life attempted to deceive me. I got angrier, angrier, more and more frustrated. This lasted, uh, this lasted for some hours on and off because they kept attempting to deceive me. And I was mad because I knew, I knew that it didn't feel right. I understood what I was witnessing, but I was caught up in reacting and not responding. Cause I took it personal. So when I stepped back, placed myself in the position of the observer, the emotions weren't so intense. They were there. They weren't so intense. It was an understanding of, although I understand what this deceitful action is attempting to invoke within me. I don't know if this person gets it. I don't know if they understand it. And it's not my job to project what I know onto them as if they're maliciously doing this because they know as I do. Okay. So how did I handle it? I sat on my couch. I turned on YouTube. I didn't take any of the suggestions that come up in the normal uh, algorithm for myself. I looked up the funniest comedians I could find and I laughed my way through it. For the next hour, I simply laughed, yo. I laughed. I didn't care about the deceit anymore. I changed my focus. And sometimes we can simply do that with our thoughts. In other situations, we use other tools for me in this situation was comic. I'm going to laugh. I'm not going to focus on the deceit because the deceit will be there whether I want it to or not. And in doing so, in simply doing so, I gave myself grace. I gave myself peace of mind. But more importantly, that person stopped attempting to deceive me 
for our next interactions. It's interesting. I wasn't like, I truly beat myself up for even losing my cool for a second. And then I said, for what? Laugh. And once I began to laugh and continue to take that approach, whether it was that same individual or anybody else, I just didn't carry that burden of deceit from anybody else. Now, is this the end all be all? Of course not. But it's a reminder that just because you may know better, it doesn't mean somebody else does. Not only is that okay, but lay that burden down if you carried it. Because that's somebody else's lesson to learn. You've learned yours. Allow them time to learn theirs. You're not responsible for teaching them. All you can do is live and lead by example. And hopefully, they catch on. Hopefully, it comes into their awareness. Hopefully, they're able to change something to give them a better experience, just as you have gained a better experience from your changes. Hope this helps at least one of y'all. Till next time, be blessed. And please, don't forget to smile.